Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Joe Pace. Today's class is all about forearm stand and working up towards it. Uh, so we're gonna give you, and I'm gonna give you some very specific steps to getting towards forearm stand. We're gonna do a full flow class. So we're not gonna just completely break down technique the whole time, uh, but we're gonna engage parts of the body that you need for a, a really strong and sound forearm stand. And there'll be really specific points that we're gonna hit along the way that get you to the forearm stand. So if we're going from step two to step three, and step two feels a lot better for you, and step three feels like it's a little too much for today, while I'm doing step three, you just do step two, and then we work forward that way. Uh, so forearm stand is, it seems very challenging at first, but it's, it's a really accessible arm balance, and it's really the first time, well, accessible if you've been practicing for a little while, um, it's really accessible, much more so than handstand, and it gives you that feeling of handstand, of balancing all of your body weight on top of your arms, um, but with a much stronger and more firm and solid foundation. Uh, and you'll notice there's a lot of opportunity for variation in the pose, so we'll get to that. But to start, we're just going to warm up with just a little bit of breathing, really simple, just one minute of just smooth inhales and exhales through the nose. Uh, this may seem somewhat irrelevant at this point in class, and we want to work towards that forearm stand, um, but it's really important to make sure that we're balanced not only in our bodies, but also mentally. So breathing brings us into that mentally balanced space. So find a comfortable seated position, hands anywhere, palms face down or up. Um, sitting on my shins, you can sit down on the floor or on a block. And just bring the eyes to a close, please. Starting to pay attention to your breath. For the next few inhales and exhales, just notice what it's doing naturally. And then slowly start to become an active participant in that breathing. So start to breathe smoothly and slowly in and out the nose. possibly adding a slight little restriction at the back of the throat, making your breath more audible and giving you the ability to control the pace of breathing, both inhaling and exhaling. Just a few more seconds here. Last inhale. Last exhale. Nice. You can open your eyes, hopefully in a little bit more of a calm, balanced space, coming to downward facing dog. <clears throat> okay. So this will be a pretty physical practice, and we're going to work and build some heat. But before we do that, just settle into this downward facing dog, reaching through the shoulders. Setting up the hand alignment, we have palms and center of the palms in line with the shoulders. So maybe your hands come in towards one another. We naturally bring the hands pretty wide in this pose. The hips will lift and the knees will bend to any degree while you reach both sides of your body long. Grip the mat with your fingertips and press down through the inner edges of your hand. So by gripping down onto the mat with your fingers, you'll feel your forearms turn on. And by reaching through your shoulders, you'll feel your upper back shoulder joint uh, really engage here in the pose and really start to build some heat in the shoulders, which is where we need it. Come back to the breath we just established in that seated pose. And on an inhale, take a little rock forward to plank. Exhale back, downward facing dog, just smooth movement. Inhale forward, bent knees on the down dogs if you'd like. Back to downward facing dog, exhale. Three more, inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. Inhale forward. Exhale, rock back. Let's just take one more. Inhale. Exhale. Take your time as you inhale, rock forward. Take the shoulders over the fingernails and then gently lower yourself all the way to the mat. Inhale up for one cobra, lighten the hands. Exhale, lower. Let's take two more. Inhale, up for cobra. Exhale, lower. Last one, inhale. Exhale. 
pressing it back up to plank, and then exhale it back downward facing dog. Pedal out the legs, bend the knees, drawing one heel to the mat and then the other. Again, reaching length in both sides of the body and establishing all of those principles and all of those alignment cues that we talked about in the arms at the start of class. From here on an inhale, bend your knees deeply, look forward. Exhale, step lightly to the front of your space. And then inhale for a half lift. Bent knees are good. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rock. Exhale, arms by your sides. Continuing to move, inhale. And then exhale, lengthen the crown of the head forward and the hips back as you come into a deep forward fold, perhaps with bent knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step it back to plank pose. Inhale, the shoulders over the fingernails. And then exhale, lower all the way to the mat. Inhale for cobra. No weight in the hands. Exhale, press it up and back for a downward facing dog. Take a moment here to breathe. On an inhale, the right leg will rise. Exhale, gently lower that leg. Just testing out how the hamstrings are feeling. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, lower. On an inhale, rock it halfway forward to plank. And then take the right hand ahead of the left hand, rock onto the outside edge of the right foot, and we'll keep feet stacked in front of one another for this side plank. So press through the index finger knuckle of the right arm as your left arm comes high or the left hand comes to the hip. Breathe deep, get long through the, the collarbones, extend wide. For three, two, steadying the side body. One, left hand comes back slightly behind right hand. Slide right hand back where it came from, halfway to downward facing dog. Left hand forward of the right hand, rock onto the outside edge of the left foot. Right foot stacks in front as your right hand comes high to the ceiling. Steady your breath, breathe deep. Feel the lower half of your body, the, the side of your body facing the ground, firm up for two. And one, right hand back, slightly behind left hand, slide it back to downward facing dog. On an inhale, bend the knees, option to jump or step to the front of your space. If you're jumping, land as light as you can. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, bent knees or not. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, arms by your side. Let's take one more sun A, just flowing through it. Inhale, arms rise. Maybe a little back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step or hop it back to plank. Gently lower down all the way to the mat. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, lower, press it back downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here, about five or so. And I do offer the option to jump back to plank. You would have just noticed that. And a lot of instructors don't do that. I actually feel like that's a very sound transition in my body. I feel like my shoulders can handle it and I don't feel really any risk at all in my own practice. Um, but if you feel like your shoulders can't handle it and it's not something you want to be doing a lot over time, just jump back or step back. Um, or if you're jumping back, jump to chaturanga. If you're stepping back, step back to plank. Okay. Always options. From here on an inhale, bend your knees deeply. Exhale, step or hop to the front of the space. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise. Take it up and back, maybe. Exhale, arms by your sides. Inhale, arms rise. Grab the left wrist with your right hand. Inhale, tall. Exhale, over to the right. Side bending for the spine. And then inhale, back through center. Switch the grip. Left hand wrapping around right wrist. Inhale, tall. And then over to the left, breathe into the right side of your rib cage. And then inhale back up to center. Maybe a little back bend, maybe cactus the arms, take the chest between them. Inhale up. Exhale, chair pose. Take a moment here to reach length in both sides of the body, just like in our down dog. Spin the pinkies in towards one another. And then drop the tailbone as best you can. Not rounding in the back, the low back, but keeping the tailbone from poking out. Deep inhale here. 
Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your hand, step your right foot back, please. Drop your back heel. Take the left knee over the left ankle as you rise up to warrior one. Just one deep breath here. Exhale, plant your hand, step your right foot forward, and then step the left foot back. Drop the back heel, heel to heel alignment, right knee over right ankle. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, plant your hands down, stepping the left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back. Feet are hips width distance, stay on the ball of the right foot, right heel is lifted. Bend in the right knee, rise up, high lunge. Left knee over left ankle, take it up and maybe back for three. Two, and one. Plant the hands down in front, step the right foot forward. Left foot steps back, hip alignment or hip width with the feet. Bend in the back knee, inhale, rise. Take it up and maybe back, chest will lift towards the ceiling. Hip points lifting up as best you can. For three, two, And one, hands plant back down in front. Step the left foot to meet the right. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, folds. Inhale, chair. Take two breaths here, just warming the body generally, getting things warmed up for everywhere we're, doing, everywhere we're going. For two. Inhale. Exhale, forward folds. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step it, jump it back. Chaturanga. Inhale for the first upward facing dog, lift through the chest. Engage the quads. Exhale, back downward facing dog. And then from here, please come to your knees. All right, so we've reached step one. We're still warming the body, but this is where we're going to start establishing our foundation for forearm stand. Also known as Pincha Mayarasana, feathered peacock. So, <clears throat> options with the arms. We're going to start with a block today. So if you don't have a block, no problem at all. If you do, great, use it. Put it on this lowest setting. What we want in our base, our forearms parallel to one another to start. Uh, and we're going to start actually with palms up. So we can work with palms up, palms towards each other, or palms down. And actually, what's going to happen if we have our palms down, the tendency is for taking this transition, our elbows will want to poke out. And that's what we want to avoid. The elbows are going to want to draw away from one another. We want to keep them in line with our shoulders. And so that's one of the major issues with uh, the foundation of the pose is the elbows splaying out. So we want to keep the elbows as wide as the shoulders, and we want to do whatever we can do with our hands to keep the elbows in that position. <clears throat> so it's really helpful as a block. So we have a block that should be about shoulders width for most people, and we can take that block and place our hands straight on the sides. And for today, and for this forearm plank, we're going to take the palms face up. This is the easiest position for the elbows to stay in that shoulder width position. So we'll start with palms up, and then we'll work accordingly. So we're going to take the edges of the hands against the block. If you don't have a block, just plant the backs of the hands against the mat, and then we'll step it back to forearm plank. So you'll notice the elbows really don't want to splay out in this position. Breathe deep here. We're engaging the core, which is something we need pretty, pretty intensely for our forearm stand. So we just want to work the core a little bit here. Press the backs of the hands into the mat. And like you're turning your hands out away from you, you'll feel the scapulas draw away and wide, which is a really good thing for us right now. And you don't feel like the shoulders are, are reacting in any way in a... Uh, in a way that transmits down to the elbows. So engage your quads, engage your core, every sheath of your core engaging here so you're supporting the pose with it. Crown of the head is long. Breathe deep for three, two, and one. Lower the knees, step it back. Take a moment here, just sit back on the heels. We're gonna come back into it 
This time we're gonna press the hands into the, out, into the outside of the block so the palms will be facing in towards one another and you'll feel the difference in your elbows and the structure of the pose, okay? Just take a few breaths here, just take a moment, reconfigure, still building heat. Okay, coming back into it. Palms against the side of the block. If you do not have a block, you have options. You can place the hands smack against one another, pressing the hands in towards one another, or just karate chop the mat. But make sure you're keeping elbows in line with your shoulders. I'm actually gonna not use the block here. So press the elbows straight down, make sure they're in line with your shoulders, and then we're stepping back. So now you might feel a little bit of pressure, unlike with the backs of the hands against the mat. You might feel a little bit of the elbows wanting to splay out from one another. But pressing hands into the block should, should bring the action of the pose inward, but don't just press the hands in towards one another. Energetically draw the elbows in towards one another too as you press them down into the mat. And it's a feeling of the sides of the, the um, up or the, the lower arm, the, um, the wrist area pressing down into the mat. So it's, it's an even distribution, it's even distribution of the weight from the elbow all the way to the hand. So you're really creating structure here, engage the core for two. One, lower the knees, sit it back, take a breath, take a moment, okay? So moving for one more, we're gonna do one more forearm plank. Uh, and this is really just to explore the position of the arm. So now we're gonna take the palms to the mat. And so if this doesn't feel good for you, if you feel like your elbows are cranking out away from one another, skip this, go back to the previous version. This we can also use a block. We just take the block right in the center and then just place it right in the L uh, place this corner, this, the corner facing you, in the, the corner of the L of your hand, of your index finger and your thumb. So gripping the mat like that, elbows are in line with your shoulders. We're creating a pretty much a box with our arms. So now the center of our palms and the center of our elbows are the four corners of a square, pretty much. Okay, so now with palms facing down, step it back to forearm plank in here. You'll almost definitely feel the elbows wanting to draw away from one another, uh, especially if you have a tight back. Uh, tight shoulders in general, the elbows are going to want to poke out. So this is where you start to feel uh, the difference between the other arm variations. So press the hands down, press the inner hands down, press the elbows down, forearms down. Breathe deeply. Gently lower the knees, sit back on the heels. You can remove the block to the side. All right, so probably a lot on the shoulders at this point, uh, but just wanna make sure that we're warm all the way to our deepest muscles in our shoulders. Okay, so now we have an understanding of the arm variations and just know in a little bit, we're gonna take it to another uh, phase of the class. You can always come back to just forearm plank. It's always an option. We'll step it back to downward facing dog for now. So feel the shoulders opening a little bit, maybe, Descend the chest towards the mat, let it feel good. On an inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, step it forward to the front of your space, taking it out of the arms. Inhale, half lift, maybe knees are straighter. Exhale, forward fold. Again, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. From here, step the right foot back. We're gonna drop the back heel and slide the left foot over to the center of the mat so our left heel is in line with the center of our back, back right foot arch. Windmill open to warrior two, please. If it's already been too much on your shoulders with the forearm planks, just take the hands to the hips. You can take the arms wide as well. Left knee over left ankle, press away through the right foot. Breathe here. So taking it out of the arms, opening up the inseams of our legs as we rotate the thighs away from one another. Breathing deep, gaze over the left hand. So bringing the body into balance, we've already engaged the core, but feel the core of the pose that we've already established. So really engage your core here to support the standing legs as best you can. From here, left palm faces up, and then you reach the left fingertips up and forward, shifting the upper body forward. Left forearm comes to left quad, right hand comes high. Maybe the right hand over the right ear. 
Press away through the right foot, reach through the right arm, and just breathe deep through your nose, not allowing your left ear to slump towards your left shoulder. Press the left shoulder away. Maybe gazes down to the floor if you, you're not feeling it in the neck. Extended side angle. Breathe length into the right side of your body. Right hand always option to come to the right hip. For three. Two. One, reach it up, pull it back up to warrior two and straighten the front knee. Both hands to the hips, and then you can slide the right foot in a little bit. <clears throat> so it's the distance between your feet is about the length of one of your legs. From here, both hands to hips, draw the right hip back. Keep both sides of your body long. So the both sides of your torso are equally long, and then feel the stretch come into the inseam of the left leg, left toes pointing forward. And just keep the hands here on the hips. As you keep both sides of your body long, maybe tipping a little bit more to the left. So this is a version of triangle pose that I like to teach because when we take the hands off the hips, we tend to bring the left hand down and then curve and crunch into the left side of the body. And instead of doing that, keep length from the crown of the head all the way through your right foot, keeping the hips back and keeping the, the chest hovering uh, in space being held up by your core for three, two. Coming back out of triangle, we'll reverse triangle, reach down the right leg, reach length into the left side of the body. And then exhale, bend the front knee, windmill it forward, step the right foot forward. Left foot will step back this time, we'll drop the left heel. Right foot slides to the center of the mat. Windmill open to warrior two. So now we have front heel in line with the middle arch of the back foot. Arms will reach wide. So your breath is always deep. In warrior two pose, we want to rotate the thighs away from one another. If you can't keep the toes in the front knee facing the same direction, and if you feel like this left hip wants to scoot forward, bring the foot, the back foot a little bit closer, close off your stance, keep the left knee over the ankle, and then reach. You do not have to be so deep in this pose. You don't have to have this front thigh parallel with the mat. As much as you hear that being said, it's really not, doesn't make the pose. What makes the pose is that it's really sturdy. Your thighs are rotating away from one another and your front knee is over your front ankle, never coming past it. Okay. So breathe deep here, coming as deep as feels appropriate for today. We still have a lot of work to do. I guess that should be exciting, right? A little bit more work to do. We're just still warming the body in a lot of ways. We want to build a lot of general heat, general warmth, so we can take that into our arm balance. From here, extend the right hand up and forward, palm as well. Left hip draws slightly back as your right forearm comes to your right quad, left hand up overhead, and then maybe over the left ear, reaching through the left arm, reaching through the left leg, press away. Right ear away from right shoulder, keep the right knee over the right ankle. Breathing deep here. Press it back up to warrior two, straighten your front knee, close off your stance. The distance between your feet is the length of one of your legs. Left hip draws back with both hands on your hips. So now both sides of your body are long. You'll notice I'm not falling and tipping forward. I'm keeping length in both sides of the body. Hands at hips helps to do that. Lift the chest and crown of the head up and forward, and then maybe decrease the angle between your leg and your torso by just shifting the pose to the right. Now you'll notice just by keeping both sides of the body long, this intensifies the stretch in the inseam of the right leg pretty quickly. So we can't come that deep into the pose uh, and we can't come as deep. So right now, if I drop my right hand, not even close to the mat, okay? We know often see people, or I often see people with their hand on the mat, but the, to do that, the left hip has to drop and the right shoulder has to drop as well, or in the, in the side waist has to tip as well. And that completely defeats the purpose of the pose. We want to stay strong and tall, legs rotating away from one another, hips parallel with the side of your mat for two. One, reverse, keep the right leg straight, 
reverse triangle. Inhale. Exhale, bend in the front knee, windmill the arms. Step the left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Keeping heat in the legs. Exhale, fold. From here, step it back through plank. Gently lower down through chaturanga or all the way to the floor. Up dog, if you're coming from chaturanga. Cobra, if you're coming from the floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then from here, please take it to your knees again. All right, so step two. Always option to take forearm plank. Step two is gonna be dolphin pose, as we mentioned at the beginning of class. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna take forearms in whatever variation that felt best when we were doing forearm plank. So for me, I like to keep my elbows in line with my shoulders by pressing my hands together. This is the way I like to take the pose. Um, there's also a nice way of placing hands in the center of the mat like so. So hands are down towards the center. Uh, you have to kind of figure out what to do with the thumbs, but other than that, that's pretty good support. Otherwise, you have the block, back of hands, karate chop, palms down, uh, at shoulders width, or palms together. Ton of variations with the arms. Just make sure the elbows stay as wide as the shoulders. Okay, so from here, we're gonna step it back to forearm plank with whatever arm variation you have, and then walk the feet in towards your elbows. Continue to press the elbows into the mat Keep length in the pose. So don't let your shoulders crunch down. Continue to reach through the shoulders as you walk the feet in closer to the elbows. Your breath is deep. Continuing to press the elbows down. Now we're starting to feel what it's like to be inverted and then have weight on the forearms. All right, so now you're pressing weight into the elbows. Your shoulders are warming. Your core is engaging for sure. Your tailbone is lifting and your knees can be bent or straight, whatever feels good. Heels descending towards the mat for three, two, one. Gently walk it back and then drop the knees. Step it back. Okay, so we're continuing to build muscle memory. That should feel pretty intense. Dolphin pose isn't easy. Uh, but now we're starting to feel a little bit different as opposed to having just the weight on the arms with a really familiar plank pose. Now we have a lot of the weight of the upper body resting on the arms uh, and starting to feel a little bit lighter in the pose. Okay, let's take it again. Palms together, whatever you're taking, make sure the elbows aren't sliding apart from one another. Step it back to forearm plank and then gently walk it back into dolphin. So we're just taking dolphin pose here as a way to just get familiar with being upside down on the arms. So this is definitely an inversion. Your tailbone's lifting and your heels are descending. So this is a big hamstring back of the leg stretch. But most importantly, you're pressing away through the elbows. And the shoulders don't feel crunched at all. The neck doesn't feel crunched at all. You can actually let your head drop between your arms and then look back towards your feet. If you'd like, continue to press down evenly through the arms, lifting through the tailbone for three, two, one, step it back to forearm plank, and then drop the knees, slide it back. Okay, so we're gonna take one more again, building muscle memory, that's what a lot of the yoga practice is. We do things repetitively, and then over time, we start to just develop the muscle memory um, and the familiarity in poses where we don't even have to think to come into them, and that's what we really wanna develop here. All right, shake out the shoulders, coming back into it, whatever arm variation works for you. Press the elbows in at shoulders width. Don't let them slide. Walk the toes in. And maybe the toes come a little bit closer to the elbow. So you'll notice I can walk it pretty close. The hips are lifting. My heels are descending. It's a pretty big stretch for the low body. I don't really want my shoulders to come ahead of the elbow. So if you feel like that's happening, walk it back a little bit. Keep the elbows either behind or on top of the elbows. Breathing deep, press evenly through the elbows, hoping that for you, that this is starting to feel a little bit more familiar with the warmth of the shoulders pretty much established. Uh, we're, we're working uh, at a point where it doesn't feel as much like fatigue, it just feels like engagement. For three, two, one, gently step it back to forearm plank, lower the knees, step it back. All right, so we've passed round two. 
We got one more round to go. Before we do that, let's come a little bit out of the shoulders and back into the core. So we'll rock the feet forward. We need a little bit more core engagement and we need a little bit of back engagement as well. So we're gonna work those two things before we make our way into the pose. Okay, so we're gonna do that by practicing uh, boat pose and half boat pose. So for both of these poses, the key action that I want you to focus on is pressing the legs into one another, okay? Everything else will take care of itself, but for this, these transitions, make sure that the legs are zipping in towards one another and actively pressing them together. We'll need that for forearm stand. Hands to the back of the knees, lift through the chest, lift the feet off the mat. Balancing on the sacrum, not the tailbone, so a little bit higher than the tailbone. Rest the weight there, spread the collarbones wide, point the toes, please zip the legs in towards one another. Continuing to press the legs in towards one another. Let the chest cave in as you extend the legs. As the legs are zipping together. Press them together. Reach hands towards feet. And then we're coming back to boat. In control, hands to the back of the knees. Legs zipping in towards one another. Extend. Let the chest cave in. Resting on the sacrum. Make your way. Half boat. And then exhale to full boat. Collarbones are wide. Three more of these transitions. Extend. Inhale. Close it off. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Spread the collarbones here and then cave the chest in. Low boat. Exhale, back to bow, lower the feet, cross the ankles in front of you, and then roll over them, resting the upper body and the front of the body against the mat. Take a breather here, take a moment. So we've got that core engagement. We want to get a little bit of that back engagement. So take the arms back, palms face down, point the toes, zip the legs together again, please. So literally pressing the inner thighs and calves in towards one another. Using that action to create essentially one leg to lift. Lift everything as you press the legs together. Hands lift, chest lifts. Gaze can be down to the mat to protect your neck for five. Lift through your chest. Four. Three. Two. And one. Gently lower all the way to the mat. Take a breath. And then let's come into it again. Inhale, zipping the legs together. Point the toes. Internally rotating the thighs as you press them in towards one another. For five. Strong back. Four. Three collarbones and shoulder blades down the back as best you can. Two. One. Gently lower. We'll take one more. On an inhale, everything will lift. Zip the legs together. Palms face down, lift through the chest. Shoulder blades down the back and towards one another for three. Two. Zip the legs together, press them together. And one, gently lower. Press it back to child's pose, please. <clears throat> Okay, and just letting the low back release. Okay, coming back up onto the knees. So <clears throat> now we're going to work on the full pose. So again, step one's available. You have forearm plank to work on. Step two's available. You can just stay and chill and dolphin. Step three, we're going to start to get upside down a little bit, okay? So... <clears throat> And there's variations in between. We'll talk about them. So you've got your arm variation. We've already started to walk the feet closer to the elbows. Now we're going to elevate one of our legs and play with kicking towards the post. Okay, so now take your arm variation. You can watch me for the first one. We're going to take dolphin. So we're going to walk the feet in towards the elbows. And not so far that we're uh, about to tip over but enough so that we're getting a, a little bit of weight and a good amount of weight on top of the, the shoulders. Stacking as best we can, we lift the right leg and bend into the left knee. So now we're gonna transition, just kick a little bit of weight onto the forearms, a little bit of weight onto the forearms, landing with a bent left knee, okay? 
So that's the transition we'll take. We're gonna take five jumps on each side, take a break, come back into it, okay? Wherever you are, taking your variation, what makes sense to you, get onto the forearms. Let's take the left leg high this time, bending the right knee, straightening the left leg. We're not flinging the left leg, we're kicking in the right. And landing just literally right here with this bent right knee. So we're taking five jumps. Inhale here, exhale, jump. Inhale, land, exhale, jump. Inhale, land, exhale, jump. Keep split legs. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, jump. Land on the right leg, switch legs, bend the left knee. Right leg is high. Inhale, lower, exhale, kick. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Lower down, both legs, knees to the mat, press it back. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so probably feeling some heat, all good. Uh, catch your breath, first point. Uh, second point is you probably notice just by jumping forward and back or up and down that maybe your elbows started to splay out from one another, maybe your shoulders started collapsing, maybe you started to lose your balance. Take that in, reconfigure. This time, we're gonna take three slower jumps. Okay, so we just did five pretty quick ones. This time, we're gonna take three really slow and considered, considered jumps. Ideally, landing in the pose, if we can, with split legs. So it may look something like this. We're gonna take the slower approach, so I'm bending in my left knee, right leg is straight. Bending in left knee, straight and right leg. I jump, didn't catch it, jump, Split leg, almost caught it, and there it is. This is where we're going. Land back down, lower the knees. Not trying to hold it for any period of time, but just a little bit of floating in the, in the middle. All right, let's take three really slow, considered jumps on each side. So I just did my left leg. Oh, well, we'll stick with you guys. We'll, we'll go left leg first. Get your upper body set, and then make sure the shoulders are never collapsing down. Keep them pressing. Left knee bends, right leg lifts. Keeping split legs, jump up, maybe catch it and lower. Landing with bent left knee, catch it, and then lower, catch it, lower. Switch legs, bend right leg, straighten left leg. Bending on an inhale, exhale, jump, catch it or not, land. Take a moment, inhale deep, exhale, press it up. Lower down, bent right knee, inhale, exhale, jump. Lower down, both knees to the mat, press it back. Okay, shoulders, <laughs> definitely feeling it right now. That's why we're taking breaks. All right, so we get one more round with this jumping. This time we're gonna take two, and you have the option to take a few variations with the legs. So we can keep split legs if you'd like, you can also bend both legs with what's known as um, a stag position. So uh, with the legs will look something like this. So you'll bend left knee, bend right knee, kick it up, and then both knees are bent. So in this, it's in this kind of stag position. And this may seem like it's more advanced, but it's actually a lot easier than the full pose because our center of gravity is lower. Straighten the legs, come back down. All right, so two bent knees, we're just hang with, with the split legs, okay? Let's do it. Two jumps, bent knees or straight legs. Bend in the left leg, bend in the right knee if you're taking stag. Inhale, bend, exhale, jump. Catch it or not, inhale, bend, exhale, jump. If you catch it, hold it for a minute, not literally. Lower down, switch legs, bend right leg, come in the other side. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Maybe stick it. Lower down, bent right knee. Step it back, hands towards your body, okay. So we've got one more round. We're pretty deep in the shoulders right now, feeling probably a little bit fatigued, starting to feel it a little bit in the shoulders but we still haven't done the full pose and that's on purpose because we're really building a journey towards it. All right, before we go any further, let's do a little bit more core work. Wanna make sure our cores are really strong. Roll it back down onto your back, please. 
Okay. We'll take the knees in towards the chest and then hug the nose in towards the knees, please. So just counterbalancing any back bending that might have happened in, the, in those jumps we just did. Rolling it side to side if you'd like. And then from here, take the hands on the right shin, extend the left leg long. Hug the, no knee, the knee to the nose and then switch. Hands grab left shin, right leg extends, nose to knee. Switch again. Keep the shoulders lifted from the ground. Switch again. Switch right leg towards, or right knee towards the nose. Maybe touch it. Keeping the shoulder blades lifted from the mat. Extend right leg. Continue at your own pace. Taking your time. Not a rush here at all. Feeling the core engage. We're gonna take these into bicycle crunches in a moment. Left knee to nose, right knee to nose. Getting a nice hip stretch as we go. Left knee to nose for the last one. Take the hands behind the head, right knee to left knee. Right, right elbow to left knee. Switch sides, left elbow to right. Keep the shoulder blades lifted as you can, if you can. Take a few more here, not giving the core any rest. Again, at your own pace. Keep the legs pumping in the same track, not losing focus on where the legs are going in space and where they're coming from. For five, four, three, two, one on each side. Come back through center, hug the knees in towards the nose. Gently lower the feet towards the mat. Feet in line with your hips, press the upper back against the mat, press the elbows against the mat, lift the hips for one bridge pose. Breathe into the core, let the belly stretch. Keeping the knees right over the ankles. Gently roll it down. You can roll up to seated and then coming back to our position with knees on the mat. All right. <clears throat> so we're finally here. We're towards the, the full pose. And again, if any of the previous variations make more sense for your body right now, even if you feel like you could do it, and, but maybe you're just feeling too tired, take the previous variation or just take rest. Either way. Okay. Coming into the full pose is exactly like what we just did. We're going to come in with a bent knee, kick up. This time, both legs will come together and then extend straight towards the ceiling. Technically, this pose is a back bend. The traditional pose is a back bend. Um, and I'll show you both variations. So uh, we're not going to take the back bend variation on purpose today, but you, you do have the option if you'd like. Press the hands together, elbows or shoulders width. And then from here, we bend the left leg. Right leg extends up. Legs are split. And then we zip them together, finding the balance in the elbows and the forearms. Now, the full pose would be lifting through the chest and then the toes come over the head for a gentle back bend, right? The other option is to keep the legs and the, the whole body really rigid in one line. You'll notice I came down lightly, one leg first, the other to meet it. That way the landing leg can bend and absorb the blow as the top leg comes towards it. We're gonna take one on each side. Okay, that's it, that's all we're gonna do. There aren't three rounds. We're gonna take one on each side, kicking up with both legs. So if you need a few hops to get there, maybe it's just split legs for you today. If you can catch the split legs and then zip them together, that's what we're going for. So let's take their left leg first, find your arm variation using the block or not. You can even have back of hands against the mat for this. That's all good, that'll work. Okay, walk the toes in. Bending in the left knee, extending the right leg long, and then kick up with split legs, and then maybe zip them together. Gaze straight down to the mat, not worrying at all about the back bend. Press weight into the elbows, find stability in the pose. Breathe deep for five, four, three, 
two, one. Left leg down, bent knee. Take it out of the shoulders, press it back. Okay, so maybe you were jumping in and out of it there. No issue. Just know that you're trying to come to a place where you feel just as calm as forearm plank. It's really just about balancing, finding that feathering point of where your feet need to be over your body, making sure you're zipping the legs together so you're only controlling technically or figuratively one leg. All right? Coming back into it, we'll take the other side. Okay, so any arm variation that feels good will bend in the right knee, lift the left leg. So coming in on both sides, trying to hold the pose for five breaths. Bend the knee, split legs, become one leg, overhead. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, almost fell out. Drawing tailbone to heels. Oh, there it goes. I'm gonna come back into it, holding it for five. Four. Three, two, and one. Right leg down first, lower back. Okay. <clears throat> sit it back for a moment. Any variation with the legs that you'd like, you can sit on the heels. Maybe take Virasana, sit between the heels. It requires good opening in the quads and legs in general. Just feeling the support of the legs beneath you. Take a few breaths here. Just giving our bodies a moment to capture the experience of being in forearm stand. So that next time we come in, we've, we've given ourselves an ability to acclimate so we can come right back to this point where we, where we left off. Okay. Coming to a comfortable seat. We'll take a little bit of a twist here for the back. So from here, Options with the legs, you can take the left leg long with the right heel in towards your body. Wherever you are, the right heel will be in towards you. You can keep the left leg extended and take the right leg across. You can also take this left leg and bend the left knee to bring it underneath you. Okay, so make sure wherever you are, both sit bones are planted in the ground. We don't want the right sit bone poking up. Wherever, wherever you are, take the, the previous variation if it doesn't feel good. Eye of the elbow to the front of the knee or outside of the elbow, outside the knee. Make your choice. Right hand behind you, lift through the chest, twist it open to the right. Breathing in the upper body, making sure both sit bones are planted down. Engaging where you need to engage to hold yourself in the pose and to keep the spine long and tall. And just letting go of anything you don't need so the twist can just do its work. Gently unwind, switching the legs. Maybe the variation you take on this side may not be the same as the other side, but whatever you do, make sure it feels good in the knees, the hips, and the low back. Okay, whatever you did on the other side, customize on this side. It may not be the same. Lift long and tall through the spine. Maybe the gaze comes over the left shoulder. Engage what you need to engage. Support the pose with your left hand, planting into the, left, the floor behind you, maybe on fingertips and breathe deep. Gently release, come back through center. From here, any variation with the legs, I'll offer leg extended wide like this in this wide-legged stance. We'll take the arms wide. Right arm will come under left arm as you give yourself a big bear hug and you can stay here. You can also wrap the left elbow inside the right and then take the backs of the hands towards one another. You might stay there or you might take palms together for full eagle double bind. Lifting the elbows up and away from you, drawing the shoulder blades down the back, opening the upper back. 
for forearm stands to come. If you like, press the, the heels into the mat. You can take this pose forward, getting a nice hamstring stretch, keeping the shoulder blades drawing down the back, maybe coming all the way to the floor with the elbows. Continue to lift up and forward with the elbows as you keep the toes pointing straight to the ceiling, shoulder blades drawing back and down the back. From here, on double bind, if you've got it, take the left hand to the floor, take the right hand to the floor, and gently walk your hands back towards you. We'll take the other side, arms will come wide. Left arm underneath right, bear hug, backs of hands towards one another, or double wrap. Lift the elbows high as your shoulder blades draw down. The counter actions create a nice stretch. Lift tall on the spine, and then take it forward again, if you'd like. You can stay seated if you'd like. <clears throat> press down into the heels keep the elbows lifting the shoulder blades drawing down press the hands together breathe deep St draw the breath into your upper back Wherever you're coming from, hands to the floor, walk it back, take the soles of the feet together, <clears throat> lift through the chest. You can sit on a block here if this feels too tight on the hips. Just taking a moment, letting the practice seal in. Option to take hands to heart center. And you can even walk the feet out away from you if it feels like it's too, too much pressure on the low back or the hips. Want to make sure we're seated tall. Again, hands at heart center if you'd like. Take a moment to collect your practice. One last closing pose, the chest opener. We're coming right back where we came from. Hands will plant behind you, fingers facing away. Feet will come out in front of you, and then just lift up into reverse tabletop. The knees will be about hips width. Get a nice chest opening here. Spread the, sh the shoulders away from one another. Open the chest. And then sit it back down. Feeling the difference between where we just were and where we are now. Now the chest is a little bit more likely to open. Hands again to heart center. Relax your jaw. Relax the expression on your face. You can open your eyes. Thank you for practicing with me today. I appreciate your effort. This is a, a tough pose. It takes a little bit of while, little, little while. Once you start to build a little bit more familiarity with it and a little bit more strength in the shoulders, especially, uh, it should be right, right up your alley. It should be coming very soon. Thank you for your time. Namaste.